Hello and welcome to Runkle of the Bailey. My name is Ian Runkle, I'm a Canadian criminal defense and firearms lawyer. Steam is doing a thing where they suggest various game demos and one of the ones that came up for me is for something called Police Shootout. Now this bills itself as sort of a policing simulator, but of course focusing on the more action-y or lurid moments of policing, the ones most officers never experience in a career and probably hope to never experience in a career. But then nobody's really going to want to play a game where you simulate doing eight hours of paperwork for a case that gets dropped before it goes to trial. So I'm not going to fault them on sort of focusing on action-y moments. But I thought let's go through this and just comment on the realism of it because I'm a criminal defense lawyer. Uh, so my comments will be somewhat Canadian you know, oriented, but a lot of them will apply to the U.S. as well. So this includes uh, three sort of tutorial levels as well as one actual level. Let's uh, let's dive in here. All right, so we got this starting out with just a message warning us that this is not a finished product. It's a demo. Uh, however, it also says at the bottom here, we're going to lanooch the full product ready to play very soon. So it hasn't even been run through a spell checker. This is foreshadowing, folks. All right, so starts out, we'll dive into the training. As mentioned, I'm not going to criticize the graphics here too much. This is a demo. I assume that they're going to, you know, do some work on it. This isn't terrible. So, Corporal Hank. All right, rookie, welcome to the A1 training skirmish. Our goal will be to teach you techniques for dealing with your opponent. Here we will deal with a direct confrontation. Tactics, methods of protecting your own ass, and attack. I'll show you everything in the simulation. In room B1, you have some targets on which you can practice your aim. There are exercises of a completely different specialty in room C1. I recommend you take a look there. During the shooting, not only your accuracy is important, you can practice it with the targets in the next room. There's a little bit of a language gap here. I suspect that these are... There's some translation issues, but again, that's something they can sort out uh, down the road. To dodge a bullet, you have to use cover. You can hide behind them, which gives you clear advantages. It won't rip your head off. Or you can take your chances and be better prepared. This training will teach you how to evaluate the effectiveness of the available shields, how to move between them, how to aim from behind them, and finally shoot. As you go through the next steps of the workout, you'll get short cues, take your time, read each one, and show me what you got. So, shall we get started? And I've got the options to ask him to explain it again, but let's just get started. So right away, um, when I think detailed police simulation, turn-based combat is not really where I want to go, but that's the way they went. So that's what we're looking at here. So we've got limited duration on our, our turns. They won't let us sit and think forever. All right, so I took a shot at him, and now I'm out of action points. So I can just end my turn. Oh, and he's running to hide behind those barrels. So this is letting us know about uh, what various cover means. All right, so I've moved up behind this barrel, and I'm hiding behind it by standing directly upright behind the, the barrel. Of course, unless you know what's in this barrel, you don't know how good of a cover it's going to be. It could be anywhere from nothing to... Uh, and I don't seem to have any option to crouch. So this is simulating just standing there and getting shot at. Wonderful. All right, so it notes that I can lean out. And critical hits. You can wound your opponent with a critical hit, which causes double damage. It can also have a special effect depending on the body part you hit. Effects head, instant kill, torso stun or disarm, hands stun or disarm, legs stun. So they're simulating trick shots here, which are exactly a thing that police officers are trained not to do for fairly obvious reasons. Now I'm going to assume that we're using some sort of simulated, you know, simunitions or something here. 
I'm just noticing that we're having sort of two-way exchanges of fire and all of the stuff on the wall here would have been hit. So the design of this room is not spectacular, but eh, it's a training level. Just if you're going to model your training level like it's a real scenario, maybe don't put like the emergency phone where it's going to get shot or, you know, whoever is coming out of the range is going to catch one in the dome. Well done, you did it. Do you want to try again? Absolutely not. All right, so that's that. I can wander into the range. It's just more simulated combat here. So start the fight. And it's just turn-based. Not sure how I missed that. All right, so we're actually simulating real accuracy in police firefights. Those circles are really misleading. So I guess they're just a, a rough illustration as opposed to showing the actual radius that that uh, bullet might land in. All right, on to phase two of our simulation. Sergeant Gary, welcome to my humble home. We don't often get visitors here. You can learn some very useful things here before you head out on the town. You can solve many situations without using a gun. Just do a little research and you might come across something like this. But let's start at the beginning. This stage of training will talk about your inventory. Hold Q to access it. And now it's making me ask about the equipment and the guns. So about equipment. Flashlight doesn't need much explaining. It lights up and that's it. Okay, cool. Why bother explaining a flashlight? But using the radio, you can communicate with the base and ask questions. This is important. Sometimes you can verify the information obtained or push the mission forward. You'll receive a new uh, notification regarding a new message. So it's showing us the notification. The messages are usually general and accessible, but sometimes you may come across a message that is only relevant at a particular location, such as checking for stolen cars. In the notebook, you can see the collected information and a partial summary of the current mission. A notification means a new note has been added. So it's showing us what that looks like. Oh, you can't see it because my face is in the way. <laughs> a baton can be useful to stun an opponent, so we can later cuff him, interrogate him, and not risk a shootout. To accomplish this, you must sneak up on your opponent, left control. You m move more slowly, but silently. However, you risk a bullet to the head. I kind of feel like if there's a risk of a bullet to the head, I'm not pulling the baton, I'm pulling something else. But, okay. I, well, I guess let's hear about the guns. The pistol has a longer range in a magazine, relatively easy to use. It still requires focus to hit the target. Shotgun, a heavy weapon, small magazine, good for short range, but if you're lucky, the burst may hit your, hurt your target more. Then there's the stun gun. It's a simple thing. You aim, you shoot, and the guy lies disarmed, although I doubt you'll have access to it at first. It can be useful to stun an enemy so we can cuff them, interrogate them, and not risk a shootout. To accomplish this, you must sneak up on your opponent. Okay, we're back to that same dialogue about risking a bullet to the head. Okay, I think that's all I needed to know. Great, go through your inventory and get back to me. All right, so that's my inventory. In your inventory, you will also find handcuffs. You can use them to handcuff a neutralized opponent, one that surrendered or was stunned. You can then try to talk to him and try to get additional information from him. You see that guy in the background who's just walking back and forth? Uh, that is an intern probably with the worst job on the planet. Not everyone is talkative, but some people open up with no problem after being cuffed. Did you understand everything? Um, yeah, I do not want to hear this again. There are situations where an opponent can not only be tackled from behind, but also distracted or diverted. Now I'll give you a hint on what you can uh, do to increase your chances. Sometimes turning a light or alarm off or on can focus your attention. I'm hoping it's focusing his attention, not mine. It can be other things too, but these examples are the most obvious. That's why it's a good idea to look around sometimes and surprise your opponent. Did you understand everything? Yeah, that was super difficult. Now I'll ask you to watch this guy moving in the back of the room. Then activate the alarm with a switch on the wall and watch what happens. Please come back to me for further instructions. Alright, so he's just walking back and forth endlessly. So 
So now we'll test your skills. Sneak up on our friend and hit him lightly in the head with a bat. Just make sure he doesn't notice you. Did you understand everything? Yes, that was not difficult. Yep, so I messed that up because the alarm didn't go off. and So Lieutenant Zack says, Hey, what are you doing here? This is not the place to hang out for you. Get out. All right, so... Try this again here. So this guy's not an intern. He's a lieutenant. And I'm about to sneak up behind him and smack him with a baton. Great, half the work is done. Remember to handcuff your opponent after you stun him. Now go and handcuff him. Did you understand everything? I don't think that was super difficult, but okay. Handcuffs. I mean, I guess it's good to practice handcuffing, but, uh, so. Well done. It's a good idea to look around for clues at the scene. Could be any number of things. A lot of cash, guns, drugs. These are just a few of the possible options. Did you understand everything? I understand. Oh, and it wants me to pick up off what appears to be the evidence locker or some sort of storage room here. I mean, it's not really an evidence locker because there's no locks. There's no cage, but I guess I'm picking up guns and drugs and cash. Well done. That's all for me. If there's anything else you want to ask, I'll be here. Oh, that's good. I don't seem to be able to uncuff this guy, so hopefully that's something he's into. Nobody seems to want the guns or the money or the drugs I just picked up. You'd think they'd want those back, but I guess I'm just going to leave with the guns and the drugs and the money. Making a great start here. So next training. This is the problem when you set up your training scenarios or your tutorials like they're an actual event because then you need to make them realistic and not people just walking out of their training with a couple of guns that they just stole out of the evidence room or which isn't even a good evidence room there's you wouldn't have that stuff just sitting on a shelf hopefully so officer it's time to teach you what negotiation looks like Rules are simple. You collect clues during the operation. You can get these clues by talking to witnesses and by noticing events, things, traces, and the place of operation. Circumstantial evidence gives you arguments you can use in negotiations. Remember! Exclamation mark. However, that not every piece of information has to be true. You have to deduce it from uh, yourself from the conversations you've had and the clues you've found. Don't ignore the messages on the radio either. They can be useful to you. The more good hits you get, the better your chances of convincing your opponent Am, am I going to be hitting this guy? I, I really hope that's not how this is going. Because that's what we want, right? To avoid bloodshed and so on. Do you understand? Not really, but I don't think you going over it again is going to help. Now, let me tell you some basic facts about the criminal. You'll need them. I'm Peter Fox. My girlfriend and I have been in a motorcycle gang called No Weakness for a few years now. We haven't been getting along lately. She claims I disappeared with another girl for the entire night. My neighbor also said she saw me with other chicks. It's not my fault they're all crazy about me, right? I have a rather good reputation among my neighbors. I say good morning to them and stuff. Even my girl's blabbing or babbling that I'm using doesn't change anything about it. Yeah, yeah, she's blackmailing me. My best friend is still arguing with her about it. He knows that I don't use it. And if I have any, yay, are only for sale. I also know that someone was trying to score something on me. When they pulled me over, they looked at my hands and gave me a test. Yeah, for the drugs, right? Guess what came out? Clean as a whistle, huh? I have a thick file. I've been written up several times for aggressive behavior and destruction of property. They say I'm a bully. I've also been arrested multiple times for drug possession. You know what would be really good to know right now? What's he been arrested for right now? Like, why is he sitting here? Is it just that I'm talking to this guy for giggles? Like, are we having a conversation just to shoot the shit? You know, maybe some clue as to why I'm talking to this individual would be useful. Hopefully they're getting to that. I got pulled over in a bar at the garage. 
as usual, it was about money. I had a few dozen pounds of heroin. Okay, I'm not seeing a huge need to talk to this guy unless he's gonna, you know, deal or give me some information on somebody higher up. But a few dozen pounds of heroin, I kind of already got him, I think. You already know a little bit, so what do you say? Shall we get started? Sure, um... Although it looks like it's giving me options to start from the beginning, repeat information, or get some additional information. So I guess let's try to get some additional information. Very well, ask. Can you tell me anything else? Some guy I thought I sold something to once. He's probably a kid. Don't waste your time with his talk. What's with the bullying? I don't know what bullying. My buddy over there told somebody I was messing things up, but... He's not really a buddy anymore. I can't even remember his name. John or something. Mario Gonzalez. Alright, let's dive in here. Okay, uh, let's get started. Alright, so I've got options to conclude the negotiations. Uh, Street Thug, which has details about uh, his previous violence. He betrayed his girl. Dealer. Addiction. All right, so let's try addiction here. So that's about his girl talking about him using drugs. I guess maybe I could tie him to the drugs so that he can't argue that, you know, they're just, they just happen to be in his car. Girlfriend says you're using quite regularly. This is supposedly from me. Peter Fox, I told you, she's blackmailing me. You've been cited and cited several times for possession. Are you really going to argue with that? You know that's enough of what we have to lock you up. Just because I had it doesn't mean I used it. All right, so that's fantastic. He's admitted that he has it. He knows he's got it. Uh, that eliminates his whole potential argument of, you know, his girlfriend planting the drugs. Although nobody's going to plant several dozen pounds of heroin. I mean, that's a lot of money to just plant to get somebody in trouble. Instead of that stupid girl, you'd listen to my buddy. After all, he said I didn't use it, right? If I have any, they're only for sale. Fantastic. So not only is he admitting he's got the drugs, but now he's admitting that he's selling the drugs. Besides, you saw my hands. You saw the test result. I'm clean. Okay. Your argument in this situation was ill-chosen. You'll only lose the suspect's trust. I don't care about his trust. Like, we're not going for beers after this. I just got him to admit that he knew about the drugs and that he was selling the drugs. So I just screwed this guy and it's saying this was a bad argument. Oh, yeah, this really should have been a scotch video, but I shouldn't really be drinking on duty. So, yeah. Oh, so it's moved that into, you know, he's unhappy with me. Oh, that's bad. Uh, I guess we'll try the dealer thing now. When we pulled you over, you had a lot of heroin on you. How do you know it's heroin? Did you try it? Uh, no, but we're gonna test it, so, yeah. You got some smart-ass friends. I know from them that you'd like to sell stuff. What sells best? Amphetamines? Heroin? Depends on what's on sale. You feel the joke? I don't understand what you mean, but I think that's a language thing. One of your clients made a deal with us. He'll serve less time for ratting you out. Dot, dot, dot. Your file doesn't lie. Dude, you got a record for possession of... Oh, come on. Stop with the bullshit. All right, all right. I sold, okay? That's it. Kids like this shit, and I like good money. Okay, so not only do I now have him on selling uh, this stuff, I've also got on, on admitting that he sells to kids, which will be great on sentencing. Well-chosen argument. Reliable information. This is how you can convince your interlocutor. I don't care about convincing him. I care about what he's going to admit in this interrogation so that was a perfectly chosen argument so street thug will try you've been in trouble a few times you were recently arrested for robbery right away robbery big deal i broke a window or set fire to a dumpster those aren't robbery everybody does it really okay uh get off my ass your friend also told us some stories i hear you've been crazy in the past there wasn't a store or bus stop you didn't wreck and why would anyone need such a ugly stops? Besides, who's my friend again, huh? Some guy I don't even remember well. He better keep quiet. You'd ask my neighbor what a good neighbor I am. I only threatened her with a baseball bat once because the idiot kept her dog on a chain. 
All right, so now I've got a new investigation to go uh, talk to the neighbor about this, you know, threats and weapons and so forth. We won't dwell on it if you give us something better. Um, hopefully this is a lie, because I think the neighbor would totally like us to investigate that. Something or someone. I won't talk about the others, but I might know something about some operation. You know that supermarket in town? Well-chosen argument. Reliable information. This is how you can convince your interlocutor. Alright, so I don't have a whole lot of options. I'm still in the red. Let's try the he betrayed his girl. Your girlfriend has quite an opinion of you. She's suggesting that you cheated on her. Did you disappear with someone else all night? Why do I care? I disappeared and it's none of her business. She's a friend of mine. That's it. Like, is the girlfriend alive? Are we investigating a murder here? It would have been nice if they told us this. Your neighbor has a keen eye. She's seen you with other girls lately. So what's it like? Are you loyal as a cop to one or do you like to go wild? Um, if you've been watching the Richard Sr. Uh, stuff... Loyal as a cop might not be the language to pick here. Just saying. This neighbor is cross-eyed. I don't know what she saw, but it's bullshit. I don't know why it should be your business, but girls like me, okay? I'm nice, and I've never cheated on any of them. That's about it. The argument in this situation was ill-chosen. You'll only lose the suspect's trust. I mean, I don't know why it's even here as an option. Like, who cares? Well, conclude the negotiations. No, come on, it's no use. You don't know what you're talking about. Go take three breaths and try again, huh? Oh, I failed. So let's try this again just to see what we get if I succeed. So now I already know what the good arguments are. We'll just skip through that fast. So dealer, just skipping through it just so we can see what's going on here. Street thug. All right, so now we can conclude the negotiations. That's turned over to blue. All right, all right. I see you know what this is about. You talk me out of it. But don't wait for the applause. Just get to work. That's the big revelation if we... <sighs> yeah, he doesn't actually tell us anything more if we succeed at the negotiation. And several of the things that they say are bad arguments actually get us great information. So this is a terrible negotiate, or they call it negotiation. It's an interview or an interrogation. It's a terrible simulation of one. They really needed to talk to a police officer or a lawyer or a somebody who knew what they were talking about. So starting the game. So, David Summer, Captain David Summer, are you the new one? We pulled matches to see who's going to talk to you first. Wait, you're Price, right? Scott Price? Fine. I'm David, but everyone calls me Mr. Bomb. Do not ask why. I honestly don't care, man. I know you come from a big city, but don't feel like impressing anyone with that. Okay, um, I wasn't going to. Here you have your desk, computer, no shit. Really? You probably already received your login and password to our police base. After logging in, you will see if there are any reports. Sometimes it's quiet, sometimes it's not. As if they were all up to rob the old ladies at the same time. Job is not that difficult. You go to the scene, talk to witnesses, observe the area if you have to. Hit someone in the face and take them to the police station. I kind of feel like that is what you're hoping to avoid, but oh well. You probably already have the keys for the police car. Well, that's all I guess. If you need anything, don't look for me. Take care of yourself. After all, you didn't get the job because of the pretty eyes, right? Alright, so this is the Cops Are Assholes simulator. I kind of feel like maybe they should have modeled a, uh, a slightly healthier interaction there. Alright, so this is just telling me this is a level select thing. So that's to go back to the headquarters. Parking lot brawl. All right, starting out in the car, there's a supermarket. They mentioned a supermarket. I wonder if that's supposed to tie in. We've got a first aid kit, computer. Collision report in the parking lot, two people. I'm not sure how this is a brawl. I'm not seeing a whole lot of brawling. But I'm actually kind of okay with this starting out with something super ordinary because 
I mean, that's what a lot of policing is about. Two idiots got into a car accident. You know, now they want you to sort it out. It's the radio, report arrival, 1023 on scene, which is good. You know, you want dispatch to know where you are. Let's go chat with these guys. Jacob, good morning, sir. I'm the one who reported our little accident. What actually happened? I was pulling out of the parking lot and this gentleman drove into me. He backed up and slammed right into my car. You're okay, right? No, come on, it's just a fender bender, basically a scratch, but the guy won't admit it's his fault. That's why I had to call. Yeah, all right then, get your papers ready while I talk to the other gentleman. So, why is he going to this car to get his papers ready when he said the other guy backed up? You know, you were pulling out and the other guy backed up? Okay, um... I'm also noticing these... These scratch marks seem suspiciously weird to me. I don't know if any of this is going to matter. So, Harry, good evening. You've heard enough, haven't you? That I'm responsible for this mess? Huh, what a guy. Take it easy. Tell me what actually happened. What happened? It happened that the type uh, doesn't know the type, okay? Doesn't know how to drive. Instead of keeping to the right, he drove down the middle like a queen, a cow. And now he's making a big deal about it. It's the good news it was late and there were a few cars in the parking lot, so I barely hit him. But you know, it's a waste of nerve anyway, right? There's some definite language gap issues here. Yeah, sure, you know, I have to report in anyway, fill out the paperwork, so get your paperwork ready and we'll talk soon. Sure, you got it. Okay, so they're not doing a traffic collision, now there's gunshots. So I guess that's a thing. So, reporting gunshots, base sent back up. There were several shots fired at a local supermarket. I'm going inside to assess the situation. Copy that, back up on the way. Now this actually makes some sense because uh, there's often the notion, oh, wait for backup. However, uh, Canadian policing experience said you know, when you've got something where there's shooting actually going on, it can be really important to get officers on scene as fast as possible. Um, even if you're not in strength the, may you, the way you may want to be. Uh, I understand this has also largely been adopted in the States. So, yep, we're going to go in. But first, let's see if we can get some recon. Please, help me, please. My daughter was left in the store. I ran as soon as they started shooting. I was sure she was right behind me, but... Calm down, I'll find your daughter. When the shots were fired, did you see her again? Yes, she was with me. I started to run for the exit. I turned around and she was gone. Please find her before they get her. Besides the fact that they fired, do you know anything else? Sorry, I don't know, and I'm so scared for my Camille. Alright, so there's at least one little girl in there somewhere. And I'm not seeing any motion in there. Let's see if this guy knows anything. The police already? Did you hear that? They fired. Relax, please tell me what's going on out there. I don't know, man. Some guys came into the store and just started shooting people. So are there any wounded? Decent question. Uh, but I think how many attackers are there is a good place to start. I saw three. Okay. So at least three. Did they hit anyone? Are there any wounded? I didn't. I ran away, but since it was shot, I don't know what that sentence means. Did you see the attackers? Would you recognize them? I actually don't care um, if he would recognize them unless there's something distinctive, but I guess if there's something that would let me know, you know, who might be pretending to be a, uh, you know, a victim. I've seen it. I've even seen one before, right here in the parking lot. On the left side of the store, hang around in a black SUV. That must be their transport. I think it's stolen. Do you think they stole it? How would he know? And why do I care? Yes, an expensive car and the group like them. It doesn't make sense. I bet it's stolen. I put no weight on this. He doesn't have any way of knowing this. Anything else? Did you see anything else? One of them was getting pretty muggy at the others. Probably the leader of the gang. He was furious. Maybe something went wrong with their stupid robbery. Okay, that's all for now. Take a breath. All right, I'm not seeing any action there, but I kind of don't want to go in those front doors because if anyone's sort of sitting there waiting, that's where they're going to be looking. And I would have liked to approach this a little more cautiously just to see, you know, you don't know if there's somebody sitting in that car waiting, like a driver or the like. 
But report the criminal's car. Witness identified the car the assailants used to arrive at the scene. Here's the license plate. T1DN4B. Wait, I'm checking. Car is owned by Frank Morgan. Multiple convictions for possession and trafficking. A compulsive gambler. Find me something more about him. Wife, lover, greatest enemy, everything. Okay, do they actually think that we're going to have a database of this guy's greatest enemies and who he's sleeping with? Ugh. All right, so I've got a getaway vehicle, but there's a fence. All right. Yes, I know it's closed. I'm trying to go around to gain a tactical advantage. I got a baton. Like, this is an emergency. Maybe... Nope, I'm going to be... Th I'm going to be thwarted by this lock. So, um, yeah. Well, I still don't want to go in the front doors. So, let's see if I can go around this way. Nope, it's closed. Still can't see any action inside. Alright, so these things, can I... Nope. These barricades are impassable walls, so I can't get through any of these. So I have to go this way. Shh, please don't speak out loud. They're still here. Then why are you... Okay. Yes, the attackers, the ones who shot? Yeah, they're going around looking for someone else to shoot. Uh, so have you seen the little girl? She disappeared from her mother's sight while running from the store. What? A girl? I don't know. No, I don't think I saw her, but someone definitely ran into the toilet. Maybe it was her. Anything else? The longer we talk, the more likely they are to find us. How many attackers did you see? I saw two, but they were shouting to someone else, so sounds like three. Their boss is a psycho. He didn't even blink when he shot this guy who tried to stop him. He just punched him right through. So much blood. Anything else? The longer we talk, the more likely they are to find us. All right, you can't stay here. If I move from here, won't they shoot me down like a duck? Eh, please wait. I'll come back to you when it's safe. All right, now, I don't want to... I would kind of like to go down this way because all of these laneways or all of these aisles are kind of focused the same direction and that would give me better sight lines. But it looks like there are shopping carts in the way and so as a big burly police officer I am unable to move the shopping carts and yeah we still have the uh those barricades so yep they are steering me in a direction which sounds to me like ambush that they are trying to make sure I can't avoid because of course they want to go for as much realism as possible so I'm guessing right about here we're gonna see something Oh, there we go. There's a dude. Oh, radio about Frank. HQ, we got something on Morgan. Surprise me. He's in debt to the Detroit mob. Informant says he's in their pocket up to his neck. He's in huge debt. Apparently, he also swiped a neighbor's car, and in general, he's not exactly a shining example to the public. Bad reputation and all that. Thanks, guys. Keep giving that support, and for now, over and out. Now, I would like to think that I would have my gun out at this stage, because, you know, we know there's shooting. I can literally see a dude and his gun, and is there... So they've talked about this big stealth mechanic where I can sneak up on this guy and baton him from behind, but there is no way to get around here. I can't even take a shot at him through the cardboard... I mean, there there is no option here other than... Oh, so now Jerry has seen me. And I know his name somehow. A cop, you think the Detroit bosses are afraid of dogs? Drop the gun and get down. I hate cops, die. Yeah, that's, that's some stunning dialogue. And now we... It made a drawing the gun sign... Her sound. All right, so...
Yeah, maybe I'll move to cover and stand right beside it. Okay. All right, so guy was killed. Um, we've just made a lot of noise. And... Yes, it's... Okay, when they say closed, I guess they mean locked. Because closed, yes, I can see it's closed, but... I might have more issues than that. Radio. Port dead civilian. I have a body here, probably one of the hostages. Where's my backup? It's pretty bad. Backup on the way, need an ambulance. Really? You heard a report of shots fired and you didn't have an ambulance already on way? Dispatch is dumb. Yeah, send the ambulance just in case. Yeah, sure, I'm sending it. Mafia, I neutralized the first suspect. The guy was yelling something about the Detroit mob. Can you check him out for me? How? Like, there's this dude that we just shot. Like, what are we going to check out here? Yeah, sure, I'm checking. He's talking out of his ass. He's a local sprawl, nothing major, and certainly no connections to people in Detroit. By the way, apparently there was talk of this robbery in town a while back. The informant sold it to us. No solid information, just rumors. I don't know how I check this guy out when I don't know who he is. Like, apparently his name is Jerry. That's enough to do a background check on this guy? Suspect was killed. Code 1067, suspect is dead. Except we know there's more than one. One guy is dead. Copy that, we're sending the coroner. Also, I haven't even gone up next to him to check that he is actually dead. Like, I saw him drop, but I guess I'm really good at spotting vital signs from a distance. And I still can't circle around here to try to... Nope, instead you have to do this the stupid way. Yeah, I can't even step over this. This is dumb. Yeah. Okay, so I see a guy in the distance. Feel like securing the handgun is a good idea. And somehow I magically knew that guy was dead and not going to get up and come behind me with, you know, to bean me with a can of soup. To pay tomato paste. So, but, you know, I magically know he's dead. And there's this dude walking around. There's that guy who I just hope keeps his full mouth shut. So for all this talk about buttons and so forth. Oh, doghouse. Quickly, I'm going to count to three and then I'm going to shoot your tail off, okay? I kind of feel like this must be some sort of foreign slang. Put the gun down. Don't do anything stupid. Ha, good. Ha, ha, ha. Three, I shoot. All right, the dialogue is, again, stellar. So, as you can see, we have a, a negotiation going on here, which just consists of him telling me he shoots. All right, I'm going to move to... This cover where I'm taking cover behind a pane of glass. You hear that, police officers? A pane of glass makes great cover. Oh, now he's moved. My cover is useless. Oh, I've killed a second suspect. Looks like I'm going to be on paid suspension for a while. Another dead civilian who... Yep. The police? Jesus, finally. Help me. He's not breathing. How do I know he's a civilian and not an another guy who's going to shoot me? Um, magic? Keep firm pressure on the wound. It'll slow down the bleeding. Is this someone close to you? What? No, he's a customer. He comes here a lot and today, shit. Do you work here? Yes, I fix what's broken and if it works, I make sure it keeps working. I went out to check one of the fridges and it started. You don't even know. It's a living hell. You know... When there's guys walking around with guns, I really want to know about this guy's life and his interpersonal connections. I know. Do you have a key to the restroom? Someone locked it from the inside and I have a suspicion that someone might be a child. 
Yeah, sure, that's not a bad thing. Wait, sir, I got it, I got it. Here you go, sir. I generally have most of the keys to the locks in the store. So why not give me all the keys? They shot, I know, but just like that, they came in and started a fuss. Well, I saw this guy talking on the phone. He looked like he was going to shit his pants, you know, scared. Then when he finished talking, he pulled out a gun and started shooting. I feel like in the middle of an active shooting situation, this is not the time to be, you know, doing all of this question and answer. It's nice to know, but not the time. You know, this scene could easily end with just bang and your, your officer falling over. Stinks to death. You don't remember anything? No, I don't know. Enemies? Didn't the owner of the crew have any problems with anyone? How's this guy gonna know? I don't know. Because of course he doesn't. Come on. What What I do know is they're a bunch of amateurs, for sure. They were fighting with each other like a bunch of shitheads. One of them kept asking for money, and the boss said, Shut the fuck up. I'm taking this guy's word on criminal enterprise. Please don't move from here for now. What? What do you mean? Do you want me to stay here? Yeah, just straight to the exit, right? No extra stops. All right, sure thing. Straight to the exit. I'll be in the parking lot if you need me. I don't see why I would need you. Like... All right, so there's another guy here. I see you're hurt. There's a first aid kit on the wall by the door. Use it, then we'll talk. Um, no, how about just talk? All right, so this this Joe guy is in charge. He's telling me when and when we're not going to talk. So <sighs> I got to use this first aid kit. Looks like you're saving my life. Thank you. You work here? I'm the store manager. All right, so this is the guy Karen wants to talk to. So do you recognize the attackers? Have you seen them before? Or, no, I'd want to know about this third guy. So I have information that two or three people are responsible for this mess. Two of them are off the hook, and the third, the boss of the whole party, he locked himself in a warehouse. Lord knows what he's looking for in there. How do I get there? As you walk through the store, did you see those big double doors in the middle of the room? You can go through them. This one here leads also leads to the back room, but the key's gone. I don't have it, and I don't think Richard... And the big ones? Yes, yes, there you go. Just be careful, huh? The guy was sharp. Are you hurt? No, I'm fine. I got punched in the face by the boss of the gang, but I'm fine. I'll live. I just don't know what they wanted. They came by, made a fuss. They didn't even touch the cash, so it's not about the money, is it? The ambulance is on its way. Maybe it would be better if someone took a look at you. There's no need for that. I really don't. I'm fine. Do you recognize the attackers? Have you seen them before? I know the boss. He's been in the shop a few times, but never made any problems. I heard him on the phone talking about some kind of pickup. Don't ask me what, because I have no idea, but this thing was supposed to be in our warehouse. We don't have anything there except what's on the shelves. Drugs? You ask me, I'll ask you. Maybe. What else? I'm sure somebody else has to pick it up. That much I know. All right, sir, I won't bother you again. Thank you very much again. If it weren't for you, get out of here, huh? No way, this is my store and my people. I'm responsible for them. I'm staying. Um, that would not have been a question. Like, we want to get people corralled out. Especially because, I mean, he says that there's something going on here. Alright, so that's closed and locked. Because once again, we're going to have all of the tactical options of walk through the stupid way. Yep, picking up the handgun is probably a good idea. Now let's see if any of the other civilians are less stupid. Is the situ what's the situation? Is it safe yet? Alright, so... He's run off. Good. I feel like protection of life here is the most important thing. Although, you know, if she's in there and there's no one else with her, that's probably for the best. Making sure no one's going to come out and shoot me. Leave me alone. Please leave me alone. Hey, take it easy. See that? It's a badge. I'm a police officer. Come on. He was shooting at me. I ran away, but I was so scared. Two clues obtained. He can kill a child. All right. It's okay, it's okay, it's all right. You're safe now. Your mother's waiting for you outside the store. Now, if you look at what she's doing in terms of her posture, 
I'm kind of thinking maybe we've jumped into Resident Evil and that, yeah, that's that's some funky graphics right there. Mom, she ran away. Oh, that's lucky. Can I go to her now? Yeah, yeah, go see your mom. And making sure she does not get shot. Yep, oh, also locked. All right, so we have all of the tactical options of go in the stupid way, and that's it. What are you doing here, cop? You're burning ground, Morgan. Your people are out of my hair. You want to talk to me like a human being and try to get this mess over with and without bloodshed? Ha, you made me laugh so hard I'll listen to what you're barking about. Oh, so now we're in a negotiation. Auto-rotative type. I don't know what that means. So, the Detroit mob, I guess we'll ask him about. One of your men, right before he started shooting at me, was yelling about the Detroit mob. What? What did he yell? What are you talking about? And you called someone and you nearly crapped your pants. Put the gun down. Tell us what you know and we'll figure out how to get you out of this. Get out of what? You seriously don't know what you're talking about. You owe them a lot of money and you know that sooner or later they're going to find or get you for it. And that debt is mounting. I'm giving you a better deal than breaking your bones for money you'll never, uh, you'll never going to give back. They gave me money so I took it, but I don't do anything for them. I never did. And the moron who told you that is a clown and a lunatic. A poorly chosen argument. Well, he did admit some stuff here. Lousy leader. You like to be in charge, but you're no leader. Treating the people who are this mess with you like shit, that's weak. What? They complained to you? They were supposed to guard the hostages and keep the kennels from interfering. Everyone's got a job to do, but even that was too hard for these halfwits. I know you wanted someone to wanted to play them for money. They were pissed, so the choice is simple. You either give me someone bigger than yourself, or I'll talk to them and settle for you. That apparently was a good, well-chosen argument, but, uh, yeah. I mean, he admitted he's the leader here, but... So, local troublemaker? Eh, fine. Your briefcase is bursting at the seams. Drugs and other weird shit. You're stupid. There's demand, there's supply, that's it. You stole the car from your own neighbor. You're from around here. People see you, associate with you, know you. Sooner or later, we'll find someone who can tell us more. Probably some, or probably everything. And then we'll put you in without any more questions. You really want to miss out on a good deal? A good deal. What is it? Be specific, man. Be specific. And that apparently was a good chosen argument. Robbing a store for a fast buck. Sure, we'll try that. It was rumored the whole city knew about all this for some time. It's interesting from whom as only I knew everything about it. Great. A poor plan for a supermarket robbery anyway. Man, what are you talking about? Doesn't it surprise you that we didn't take a dime or that I came to this warehouse for a reason? I don't see you getting promoted to detective. Well, you just admitted a whole lot of really interesting stuff here and I bet it's going to tell me this was a bad argument. I also know that you made arrangements with someone to pick up the goods at the back of the warehouse. Don't make me laugh with this conjecture. Ugh. Yeah, so that was a bad argument here for some reason, notwithstanding the fact that he admits all sorts of other stuff. Auto-rotative type. I don't even know what that means. You don't have any boundaries, do you? You kill without blinking an eye. It's a robbery. You go in and cause a major fuss. You didn't help yourself by shooting the kid. Okay, I admit I overreacted, but the baby got away from me, so I don't know. The gates of hell are still only half open. I didn't bring my new colt to not shoot it. First you make me laugh, and now you piss me off. I don't like it. The price for that is a bullet in the head. Oh, this is so bad. Um, so I don't seem to have any way to walk in other than into this stupid cover. And then it's his turn. Okay.
All right, so it says a third suspect. I didn't see anyone else shooting at me. Seems fairly empty here. Closed. Closed, okay. Collect three packs of drugs. I only see two so far. I don't see a whole lot of reason as to why there are drugs here, but, you know. Oh, there it is. For another dead civilian. Player, I got another dead civilian here. What the hell is wrong with his backup? Where's the damn ambulance? There's an accident on the main road to you. The road's blocked for good. They're looking for a detour. Then let them look faster. I got some good shit here. Resist and don't play the hero. Little late when you told me to go in, right? Uh, yeah. Drugs. I found a couple packages of some crap in the store's warehouse. White powder, probably for sale. Secure what you can. The rest will be taken care of by the techs. Second suspect killed. Copy that. Coroner's on his way. Third suspect killed. Coroner's on his way. I mean, pretty much the only person... Like, hey you, how'd those drugs get into... Uh... Kind of an interesting question as to how those drugs got into the warehouse in the first place. Oh look, now I can go this way. Uh, objectives, get back in the police car. Great. Um, okay, they made a deal and everything's fine. I kind of feel like I still do need to take a police report about this <laughs> accident. As much as it might not be the major event now, it is still kind of important to document why I was here. And, you know, maybe even check these guys, see if they're impaired. I mean, I know it's not the the biggest thing at this point, but yeah. Nope, we're just... Mission over. Penalties. Suspects killed. I'm not sure what other options they had there. Suspects run away. Zero. Civilians killed. Bonuses. Secured weapons. Secured drugs. Looks like I got 50%, although it shows all of the objectives. I'm not sure why. Robbery of a local supermarket. The situation was contained by one police officer. I'm guessing that the the whole thing of setting up police AI is too hard, which is why backup never shows up. So they play these games, they watch Nolix, and then everyone thinks they can be like that Danny Ocean or another John Dillinger. I'm for a media ban and I'll vote for it. That was the PR spokesman of the local police. Okay. Police officer, a hero to mom and her daughter. All right, so that concludes police uh, shootout, the demo. All right, so some final thoughts on this one. It's really bad, and I mean that both as a game, but more importantly, as a simulation of what it's trying to model. You know, we've got this uh, police interrogation where you go in, you don't even actually really know what he's been arrested for. You know, are we, what's the objective of this interrogation? Are we trying to get him to admit this is his heroine? Um, is his girlfriend dead? Like, they sort of suggest that there's something going on there, but we never actually know what that's about. You know, normally an officer going into an interrogation is going to have some clue about where they want to get to. You know, do we want this guy to admit that he killed his girlfriend? Do we want this guy to admit that these are drugs that he knows about, that he's trying to, you know, sell? They also don't really know what is a good answer or a bad answer. You know, when I get this guy to say, hey, listen, you know, I didn't have these drugs because I'm going to use them. I have these drugs because I'm going to sell them. Like, 
that's fantastic. But they say, no, you you did that wrong. You know, all he did was admit he knew that the drugs were there and that he's a drug trafficker instead of a drug user. Like, that's fantastic. You know, that's we're going out for drinks, boys. Let's celebrate. It's like, oh, no, you need to be chided. That's that's wrong. You know, we're trying to model, you know, a police response to a active sort of dangerous thing, but it's impossible to really consider anything tactically because what you're looking at there is this scenario where you can't make any real choices. You know, you have to get ambushed by this guy because we can't let you go around where he is waiting in what is a clear ambush because that might require you to step over a wire barrier or push a shopping cart. Like, if you can't create enough to model this, you need to at least do, you know, do better. It's really awful. Um, every single, you know, criminal you encounter has about, well, actually has substantially less uh, personality and thought into their sort of what they're doing than an extra in Braveheart. You know, they all just have one objective, which is they're going to see a cop and they're going to give some stupid line and then fight to the death. Well, most criminals are not actually in the mood to fight to the death. Like what these guys are there because they're looking to get paid and they're just going to, oh, well, a cop showed up. I guess it's time to die. I mean, there should actually be some discussion with these guys. It's probably possible to te to get these guys to agree that maybe they would rather not engage in a gunfight here. Maybe they'd rather be taken into custody. I mean, I don't know why I had handcuffs there. I guess they're if I'd finished the uh, that last, you know, negotiation better, maybe I could have taken that guy into custody. But, yeah, I mean, they give you these options for, you know, we're going to say, oh, you got this stealth mechanic. Well, that stealth mechanic, in theory, requires you to sneak up behind somebody in order to baton them in the head, but there's no way to sneak up behind the guy because they force you into an ambush. The other thing is just thinking about that, it makes no sense because most circumstances, it's either going to be inappropriate to sneak up on the guy to baton him, like if he's sitting there with a gun. I mean, it might make some sense to, you know, hit him with a taser, but really, you know, this is a, a life or death situation. You're not going to get up to anything... You know, no officer is going to be that much of a show off when there are live civilians who need to be protected there and you're the only person on scene. You know, that seems like a time to have your gun out and to, you know, be a little smarter. You might want to come up behind somebody and then, you know, confront them from behind from a superior position. But this game's not going to be able to model that. So, yeah, it's, it's really bad. It's just, if this is, you know... I get that it's a demo, the game's not finished, but typically with a demo, you want to show off the game's strong points. I've played a lot of game demos where you play the demo and you're like, this is really good. And then you play the game and you realize that there's nothing out there except the demo. Like they, that was their best part. If this is the best they can do, I've got some serious concerns. Uh, I also want to just comment a bit on what I see on Steam itself, because, you know, this is the supermarket level that we see on Steam, but it's from a different angle. You can see the people running away here. There's no actual way that I can see to actually get this, um, get this scene. But they show different things here, you know, selecting body parts, uh, actual action in terms of reloading the gun. Uh, maybe I could have reloaded, I don't know. Uh, this other officer who's down, you can see things about, you know, checking all of this uh they've got bullet time here so far as i can tell none of this is in the game so this steam page is exceedingly misleading uh yeah so i went into this i wasn't expecting a whole lot because quite frankly when i see people saying hey we're going to simulate police activity the problem is that if you're actually doing a real simulation the job is going to be super boring Again, most policing activity is going to be things like, oh, hey, this guy is parked 15 inches away from the, the curb. The local bylaws say that he can't be more than 12 inches. I'm going to write him a citation. Or you're going to get things like, okay, I've just attended at this, you know, break and enter. The break and enter happened, you know, 12 hours ago. Nobody's here. 
I've sort of taken enough information so that I can fill out a report that this guy can use to collect on his insurance. Uh, maybe we've taken some samples if we're being really diligent or if there's something really obvious that uh, we can take that might lead us to somebody. But largely, I'm just going to go back to the station now, fill out a report, and, you know, this guy's going to make an insurance claim and we'll probably never solve it. That is really not the sort of thing anybody's going to be super excited to play. I mean, I might like it. I would probably say, yes, this is a, an excellent thing. I'm glad somebody's done it. And then I probably wouldn't play it. I'd probably play something else, just to be honest. So, yeah. The real faults on this game aren't so much like the bad game design. It's just the points where it's so clear that they don't even know what a good outcome for a police officer is. So I cannot recommend this game. I The most fun parts about this game are dunking on it. Anyway, um, thank you for watching. This is something a little bit, I guess, a little bit sillier. I'm working right now. I've got a, a big court date on my Section 74 thing coming up. So uh, some fairly lighthearted videos and probably a little slower while I work on that because that is, of course, super important. Anyway, thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments below if this is something you like. There's other sort of criminal justice or legal games that I could look at. Um, or if it's something you're not interested in. Both of those are useful information. Uh, I also want to thank my Patreon supporters at the $50 level. Sir Daniel Wicks of Alberta, Jason Elliott, D. Mo, Canada's National Firearms Association, North Central Process Service, Kyle Martin, Jean-Guy Toussaint, Ivo Nedev, Christopher Molina, the CCFR, and the Canadian Shooting Sports Association. At the $30 level, Sights and Arms Limited and Mark Olivier Damour. And at the $20 level, Matt Ward, Mark Whittington, Dale Nesbitt, Cameron Johnson, Andrew Elsich, and Adam Meester. I also want to thank everyone in the $10 level immediately following. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope this has armed you with knowledge or at least maybe some entertainment. Uh, yeah, let me know. This one was a bit of a lighthearted experiment, but uh, let me know if you want to see more of this, less of this. I'm still kind of figuring things out as I go. So see you next time.